Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Daniel, and today I'm talking about a subject called migraine myths. I really mean here migraine misconceptions. So migraine affects 12% of the world's population. It's present in 25% of women and 6% of men. It's a chronic, episodic, neurologic disorder that makes 91% of persons disabled and unable to function when in the midst of a migraine. For women, migraine is the most common medical problem, more common than hypertension, arthritis, overweight, and diabetes. In spite of all that is written, everyone's migraine is specific and different to themselves. Although there are a number of books, magazine articles, webinars, lectures, podcasts, and YouTube videos on the subject, there's still a lot of wrong thinking about migraine. Migraine is poorly understood by persons without migraine, and there's a lot of misunderstanding. What are these migraine myths? Well, the first is migraines are easily treated by over-the-counter drugs. Alas, no, that's a wrong, and unfortunately, the majority of persons with migraine, about 70% of them, have never had a diagnosis of migraine made by a doctor, nor are given a prescription for migraine treatment. Therefore, over-the-counter drugs are the only viable options for many persons with migraine. They are denied taking one of the 30-year-old triptans, which work the best for migraine treatment, especially if you're taken at the onset of a migraine. Rare migraineurs have their migraine headache eliminated by using an over-the-counter drug like Excedrin, Advil, or Aleve. The real problem is, for many, is that they will treat their continuing migraine headaches with Excedrin for too long or some other medicine and develop medication overuse headache. The number one diagnosis for a person who sees a headache doctor is medication overuse headache. Migraines are not easily treated by over-the-counter drugs. Persons with migraine can just ignore their headaches and get on with their lives. Migraine is the second cause of disability in the world. It's the first cause of disability for young women. This is the reality of how serious a medical problem migraine is. Affected victims have severe headaches which throb and sensitivity to light and sound. Migraine is made worse by being up and about and persons with migraine want to lie down in a quiet, dark room. Migraine turns on the nausea vomit center in the brain so that affect persons, affected persons feel sick at their stomach. Truly a miserable human feeling and they spend time leaning over their commodes vomiting all the stomach foodstuffs, then bile, then they have the dry heaves. Not a very comfortable situation. All these symptoms are very limiting, rather terrible migraine symptoms. Persons with migraine cannot ignore their headaches and just get on with their lives. Well, if you have a bad migraine, you should miss work or school or childcare and just stay home. The luxury of just staying home, lying in bed, and doing nothing is not available to most adults who have responsibilities and things they just have to do. Many of them just drag themselves to the office to work, although the performance is poor, or they go to the grocery store and shop because their families need to eat or get in um, long pickup lines at schools, retrieve their children, bring them home. Migraine is three times more prevalent in women than it is in men. And it's usually the women of the world who attend to the responsibilities mentioned above. Only their worst migraines disable women and compel them or their husbands to take them to the ER for acute treatment. Migraine patients hang on and do what is expected of them, even while suffering terrible symptoms and distress. Migraines just last a few hours or a day. Well, the International Classification of Headache Disorder states that an individual migraine may last 4 to 12 hours. 72 hours is three days. Persons with a diagnosis of chronic migraine have, by definition, 15 or more headache days per month, eight of which have migraine features. 
Most of those with chronic migraine are over-treating with headache medication and also have medication to reduce headache with daily headaches for months or years. As a headache doctor, I've often saw patients with chronic migraine who had daily headaches for years. This comment plugs into the reality of migraine treatment in the United States. 70% of patients have never had a diagnosis or modern headache treatment, and so all that's left for these unfortunate persons is to use over-the-counter drugs or else search the internet for treatment, which is often supplements or diets, which are generally ineffective. Despite its prevalence, many people still do not understand the reality of migraine and what it's like to live with the condition. And this lack of understanding can unfortunately give way to misconceptions or assumptions that are just not accurate but hurtful. Living with a lifelong disease can already be incredibly difficult to manage, but add on to that the stigmas and misunderstandings surrounding the condition and navigating life as a migrainer can be even tougher. All migraines are the same. No, just like all person differ from one to the other, some migraines only appear as abdominal migraines in children or teenagers who have rare or no headache, but significant GI symptoms or nausea and vomiting. Children with abdominal migraine outgrow them by their early 20s, but many of them just go on to have regular migraines during their adult lives. Some persons have plain old what used to be called common migraine, which is now called migraine without aura, and these persons have typical migraine features. Others may have what used to be called classical migraine, but is now referred to as migraine with aura. These persons usually have a premonitory visual aura of seeing zigzag lines, spots, or holes in their vision that's followed by a typical migraine headache. Some migraine with our patients may have arm or face, same side numbness, or trouble talking called aphasia. 70% of women with migraine may experience their headaches two days before or during menstruation. Some migraineurs have early morning or middle of the night migraine occurrence, while some have trouble and attacks when they exercise or during sex. Some have a migraine event with barometric pressure change, a very common issue with migraine. And others with eating certain foods, such as cheese, chocolate, or MSG. All the relationship of migraine attacks to food and alcohol are difficult, and with some questionable veracity, the most common alcohol drink aggravating migraine is red wine. Some persons with migraine have terrific motion sickness, which they may not be so bad as other migraine patients. Some migraine patients have let down headaches on the weekend or on the holiday, while others have headaches with stress or recent freedom from stress. All the variables mentioned above comment on how migraines are not the same. Migraine is a complicated, multifaceted neurological problem with many different symptoms and possible migraine event scenarios. Migraine lifestyle changes will cure migraine. If that's true, that most of migraine patients will fare better with their headaches if they're on the migraine lifestyle, that's true. This incorporates aerobic exercise, a normal sleep schedule, avoiding migraine triggers like red wine if that's a personal trigger, increasing, decreasing stress as much as possible, avoiding daily caffeine, and limiting headache medication to no more than two days a week. However, migraine treatment is just not that easy, and many migraineurs will still need help. Often, specialist migraine doctors help, along with medication trials, acute and preventive medications to get the headaches under control. Migraine is just a headache. This comment might have come from one of those persons who say, I never had a headache in my life persons who are not very sympathetic to migraine sufferers in their life and have no idea of what migraine is really like. Give them one bad headache and they will know the truth. Migraine is a psychological problem. Well, 
Migraine is comorbid, a term that means exists along with many psychiatric syndromes. Migraine and depression are 50% comorbid, while migraine and panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder are 40% comorbid. Migraine is also common with bipolar disorder. But migraine and these conditions are not caused one to another. Migraine and these psychiatric illnesses are related by genes and family. And since the number one lifestyle issue driving migraine is stress, then the normal stress of depression or anxiety can drive migraine. Headache is the only symptom of migraine. The normal lay concept of migraine is that it is a headache related to a medical problem. But then some person's migraine may have motion sickness in the back seat of the car and not have a headache. Some persons with migraine with aura may have a visual attack in the mid to later life and not have a headache with it. With a migraine headache, there may be nausea, vomiting, dizziness, confusion, vertigo, photophobia, sonophobia, osmophonia, uh, tiredness, need to sleep or be down, irritability, flickering, zigzag, visual auras, numbness of one arm, the same side cheek and tongue, aphasia, lightheadedness, and fainting. There's a large gamut of symptoms related to migraine. All migraines come with aura. 20 to 30% of headaches of migraine type come with migraine, with aura. But the remaining 80 to 70% who have migraine and headache without aura, they do not have any symptom like that. Some persons experience a visual aura without headache. They would be classified as having migraine with aura. The classical case is a postmenopausal woman past 50 years old. And this used to be called migraine sine hemicrania, where sine is a Latin word for without. So it means the migraine without hemicrania. And hemicrania refers to the migraine headache part. But ICTH3 calls this typical R without headache. This is also called silent migraine and a cephalic, a cephalic migraine. If you do not get a headache, you don't have migraine. No, that's not as true as mentioned above. Migraine with our persons may just have the aura with no headache. Only women get migraines. Women have migraine three times more often than men, and the findings there are that 25% of women have migraines, while 6% of men have migraine. The reason for this difference is not fully understood, but may relate to estrogen, menstruation, pregnancy issues. I personally have seen many men with migraine, and for them, like all migraine occurrence, it's a genetic family problem. Only adults get migraine. No. Abdominal migraine in children and teenagers is considered to be a type of migraine, and the majority of them do develop plano migraine when they're older. There are rare reports of infants with migraine in the literature. All migraines are caused by stress. Well, stress is the major trigger of lifestyle issues for migraine persons and for causation, but stress is not the only issue. So I'm going to read a list of common migraine triggers. Nervous, stress excitement, freedom from stress, let down weekend holiday headache, menstruation with fluctuating estrogen levels, Elevated estrogen level from birth control pills or treatment with post, for postmenopausal women, hypoglycemia from fasting, parametric weather change, motion sickness, mountain sickness, decompression illness, insomnia, oversleeping or napping, nocturnal end of dream headache, fragrances, flashing, flickering, fluorescent lights, dietary factors. Caffeine without uh, caffeine withdrawal, so withdrawal from caffeine. Weir, wine, beer, alcohol, hangover headaches, brain freeze, ice cream headaches, toothache grinding with TMG syndrome, prolonged overexertion. There are no treatments for migraine. Of course, there are treatments for migraine, and they have existed since antiquity. Current treatment comments would be: do the migraine lifestyle. 
use a fast-acting tryptin at migraine onset, like simitriptin or zolmatriptin. Tryptins are generic and covered by most major insurance plans. Tryptins are still the best acute therapy drugs for migraine, but they, but they do not work for 20 to 30 percent of persons. And other drugs may be tried here, such as Timolol eye drops, DHE nasal spray or injection, Nurtec ODT, Alexabim, Coilipta, Trudhesia, or Raval. If migraines occur more than three or four times a month or with a previous event of medication or use headache or personal preference, um, oh, the pay insurance requires one or two of the older, cheaper, generic drugs for migraine prevention like amitriptyl, enderol, depakote, topiramate to be used, and if these drugs fail, then the doctor may order one of the new CGRP drugs such as Amavig, Ajovi, or Mgality. Diet changes always prevent migraines. Results on diets for migraine are speculous and more research is needed. As a general rule, the treatment of migraine triggered by food is clinically identifying the specific food that causes headache for that person and then avoiding eating it. Treatment for this is still an uncertain medical situation and trial and error identification of the food triggers of migraine for that person and then avoiding consuming that food triggers the best approach. So I want to thank you for listening to all this. Please uh, read my big book on migraine. I have a small book on migraine. Go to my YouTube videos on migraine. God bless you folks who've had migraine and suffering with it. And I'll see you again on the next talk.